Beware of the zombies. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I am, but I'm not. I want to talk to you today about uh, an article that I read over the weekend that I think is incredibly important and can derail not just your retirement plans, but your savings plans. And, and if anybody that's affected by this, this is information that you're going to have to pay attention to. It's, it's critically important. But before I get into that, I ask that if you find this information or any information on my channel helpful, I ask you to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to keep a more personal connection with me, uh, you can always uh, become part of a follower on my Instagram page. And I'll put that link down below as well uh, in, a, in the form of a QR code. So you can point your phone, click your phone, and it'll take you to my IG. And then you could, you could friend me on Instagram and we could communicate through, through instant message. But anyway, let's get into it. I was reading an article published by NPR, National Public Radio, over the weekend, and it talked about the concept of zombie mortgages. And so the way the zombie mortgages worked is there was a, back in around 2008, when we had the big mortgage crisis, there were a lot of people that went in and got loan modifications. And so because the way the loans were structured prior to that, people didn't necessarily qualify for the loans they got, but to keep people inside of their houses, what they did is a lot of banks said, we're going to go ahead and give you another loan. Uh, we're going to give you an 80% uh, loan, and then we're going to give you a 20% second loan. So that way it, bring, it brings you to the value of the house. You can stay in your house at a fixed rate, because remember, a, a large majority of the subprime mortgage crisis were adjustable rate loans. And so taking people out of adjustable rate loans that were becoming mature uh, and causing people to pay, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars more a month, just amounts they couldn't afford. Um, having a loan that's structured in that way was really a good thing. But what the banks also did is they said, what we're going to do is we're going to give you the 80 percent loan with the 20 percent second, but we're going to go ahead and forgive the 20 percent second. And so people went. Uh, went on the assumption that that 20% was was forgiven and it wasn't a big deal. They didn't have to worry about it. And when they called and they said, I got a bill for it, the mortgage company said, don't worry about it because we've forgiven it. It's just, it's still in the system and it's part of the process. Well, here's the catch. What's happening now is the those loans were then bought uh, by other banks and, and other servicers and unfortunately, a lot of those second loans that were forgiven, it was never documented those loans were forgiven. And so the article speaks to several people, one of which was a registered nurse in Massachusetts who lived in their house. She lived in her house for 18 years. And one day she looks out of the window and they were serving foreclosure on her because, again, let's go back to what was happening. The, you go 80 first, 20 percent on the second. The bank says don't um don't worry about the second even though there's notices coming so is this as she was getting calls from the bank saying you owe us on the second owe on the second because it's a different bank she's thinking it must be a scam somebody must be calling me up and scamming me uh because they're asking about something that was forgiven and why would somebody call me up and ask me about something that's forgiven well the second loan the second mortgager they don't have documentation for it the second the new Whoever bought that loan is now looking at that second. And what's happening is that the amount that's due on that second is almost double in some cases what the original loan amount was just because of all the fees and all the interest and everything that accrued on top of it. And so legally, the banks are able to foreclose on those properties. And, and so what's happening is people are getting their properties foreclosed upon. So there's a couple of things that I think you can do to combat this. And again, I'm no expert in this, but I want to get the information out to you because I know not everybody gets information the same way. And for those of you that look to me as a, as a source of information, I want to make sure I get you really good information that you can research and so on. And I'll do what I can to make sure that a link to this uh, article is in the, in, the, uh, in the description so you'll be able to verify the information I'm getting. But a couple of things I think you can do is one, if you uh, got a loan modification uh, and back in 2008 or around the time of the loan crisis, go back and take a look at your loan documents. Look at, go, if you can't get them, if you don't have them sitting in a file cabinet somewhere, go to your mortgage company and just verify that you have, uh, just you have one mortgage or do you have a first and a second. And then contact that, that company 
that you have the second mortgage with if you haven't been paying on it, just to make sure that you're not behind and just verify that you're paying on all of what you should be paying on. And if you do have a first and a second and the second was forgiven, verify and get in writing that that second loan was forgiven because what you don't want to do is get caught saying this loan was forgiven and then how do you know? Well, so-and-so told me. Well, that's not really going to work for anybody as, as in most cases with most things. Um, and then lastly, if you're getting calls from the bank saying that you're foreclosing on or that you're, that you're, your second mortgage is delinquent. Um, don't blow that off. Uh, don't, or as they say, don't summarily dismiss those claims because that might be a sign that there's something awry and you end up. And they call these zombie mortgages because, you know, in the zombie movies, what happens? Somebody dies and then they come back and they terrorize you. That's exactly what happens here. And so there's several cases that are cited in the article where people thought their loans were all good uh, 15, 17 years later they're getting calls from the bank. And so it, it seems like a scam, but then it turns out that it's not and they're losing their homes and there's nothing they can do about it. And I would hate to have uh, any of my subscribers or, or any of the folks watching this video in that situation. So um, over the last, uh, I had about a 10 hour drive yesterday. So the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that I, I put a video out about this um, so you can, so you have the information at your fingertips. And if you have any more questions or you need help with this, and I know there's there's a lot of folks that this may be confusing and, and so on. I am good at, at gathering information and doing some research. And so if you have any questions, please put the questions down in the comments. Um, I'll get back to you right away as I do with all of my comments. And um, and I also would, would ask that you take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like the channel, you know, hit that like button. And then follow me on Instagram. Does no harm. You get to see what I'm up to. You realize that I'm a real person and I'm just like you. I just happen to have set up and, and, and are in a set of circumstances that allowed me to retire when I was 51 years old. But it's not about, like John F. Kennedy Jr. says, not what you can do is what you can do for your country. Well, my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition. And I'm doing that by trying to help people with information that may, they may not have had access to or thought was outside of their reach. So on that note, I, I hope you have a good rest of your day. I hope none of you are caught up in this, but if you are, please let me know. Uh, if you need help, please let me know. Um, and if you want to share anything else, and if you have any ideas for future content, let me know. But and then when you leave a comment, let me know where you're where you're coming from. Let me know where you where you live or what what state you're in. I'm in Northern California, and so um, and I know there's Northern California, there's the rest of the United States. So let me know where you're from, and uh, so I know who's who's listening. So on that note, I'll let you get back to what you're doing, and thank you for, and have a great rest of your day.